Uh, the, the sequel to Garden Guardians is this project yeah. in the same garden a few years later. I call this one Liquid Ballistic. Again, I was thinking of defending the museum as it's sort of fortress-like in its uh, setting on, on the bluffs there in La Jolla. And uh, so I, I made a cannon, and on, uh, when you kind of come close to this cannon, you realize it's actually made of mahogany in it. It's got handles. It works as a seesaw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I made actually I ended up making three of these cannons, one of which was installed in a downtown park in Brooklyn, New York for a year, and a very busy public place. Uh, this right after I installed it, I, I spied on these two gentlemen on their lunch hour, uh, trying to make sense of this new thing in their park. And here they are figuring out that it's a big thing to try to them. They take a ride. <laughs> district headquarters in Old Town here in San Diego. Uh, this is how you might first encounter the work. When you approach the Caltrans campus from the parking lot, you're greeted by these gesturing organic timbers reaching out from within the courtyard space. Um, and then in the courtyard, you look up and see, this is kind of how it looks. It's, um, here's a detail. It's basically comprised of many sections of eucalyptus trees that I've filleted with a chainsaw and spliced together in, in a configuration that is intended to suggest something like some organic freeway um, thing, or just a, an organic network of some sort. Um, and uh, as you go up into various balconies of the building, uh, you can start to really notice how, how much topography and undulations these timbers have. Um, at the third floor balcony, the, those waves in the timbers are sort of um, suggestive of the landscape, and the work has a very landscape-like feel at that balcony. Uh, moving up into the fourth and fifth floor balcony, you start to get a, an aerial view on that landscape, and the work has takes on a, a kind of map-like quality. And uh, in fact, people have often remarked that how it seems to literally be a map of the local freeway network. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not, but it, I, like it. I like that it's, it, it's uh, reminiscent of that. And um, since I did that project uh, five years ago, um, working with trees and tree parts and uh, splicing branches together um, on a small scale but also larger scale work has been one of the main ways in which I've been working. Uh, this, this was the first project in a series that I recently did called Split, Splice, Display, Display. And this was a single uh, olive branch which I, I did those things to. Uh, basically uh, segmented the olive branch into sections that could lay flat and sliced them down the middle, ultimately reconnected them as they had been uh, uh, you know, have just reconnected them to reconstruct the branch, but all uh, sort of flayed and laid flat, uh, hung on the wall. It's got a hinge in the middle, which articulates its symmetry. It actually allows it to be folded up and transported more easily. It's about uh, 11 feet long. This is a smaller one, also with that articulated symmetry with the hinges. But in this case, it's. Uh, looking more for some sort of ornate, doily kind of configuration. Uh, here is one, I call this one patch, and it's a more dense kind of network, implying that it could go on forever. This one is, I call it delta tissue, and it's uh, just a, a, basically a pattern logic of 
of uh, triangles that make bubbles, and this is a detail of that sculpture uh, that gives you a sense of how all of the joinery involved in, in making these works. And this is the last <coughs> image that I have uh, to show you. And so now it's uh, Dr. Ramachandran's turn to, to come up and present for you. Many of you know what Ramachandran, Dr. Ramachandran has done with the mirror box it is used for the phantom limbs. I won't go into the details, but many of you know this. Uh, uh, Roman has a work of all art called Mirror Box. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> that was called with the uh, TV tray? That's called FaceTime. Oh, I'm sorry. FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, FaceTime. Change the name. Well, the question is <laughs> FaceTime is a work of art. Is Ramachandran's Mirror Box a work of art? From your perspective, can a, can a scientific apparatus or uh, piece of equipment I think, uh, that solves a problem? It's are, you, are you familiar with his mirror box? Maybe, the Phantom maybe, maybe, maybe uh, yes I am. Maybe, maybe Ramachandran should uh, let the audience know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume that many of you know this. Uh, I'll, I'll give it like one minute summary of it. One minute summary of the mirror box. Okay. People with arms removed have phantom limbs. They vividly feel the presence of the arm, continue to feel it. It's called a phantom limb. Often the phantom limb, you see it in 99% of patients, and about two thirds of them is excruciatingly painful, the phantom. So it's a serious clinical problem. The pain persists sometimes for years, sometimes for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, okay? And sometimes the, the hand goes into a clenching spasm like that. The patient will say, my phantom doctor is in this awkward position like this, and it's excruciatingly painful. And I can't move it even if I want to. So what we did was simply put a mirror here in front of the patient. So the mirror is centered here, and the patient's phantom limb is like that. And the patient looks inside the mirror, obviously he can't see the phantom because there is no arm there. And also there's a mirror, okay? But then he puts his normal hand here and mimics the posture of the phantom. And he looks inside the mirror and he sees his phantom resurrected. And the phantom, of course, has the same posture uh, as it should because what, what you're asking him to do is to mimic the posture of the phantom using his normal hand. So when he looks at the mirror and looks at the reflection of the normal hand, it looks like you resurrected the phantom. And then I say, is it painful? And he says, it's painful and cramped. Now, and I say, now move both hands together and open your fingers and do perform an orchestra. He says, well, I can't do that because my left hand is frozen. I said, no, we'll try it anyway. And he does this, and of course he sees the reflection of the, left hand, the right hand moving, and it looks like his phantom moves. And this instantly makes it feel like it's moving, and animates and liberates the phantom, and thereby instantly relieves the patient of phantom pain. In many patients, not in all patients.